Hello and welcome to this video about the thesis by publication. Uh, today's video is about how to structure your thesis and I've been looking forward to this one. This is the first paper that I wanted to write after finishing my own thesis by publication. It's the paper that I wished that I had uh, and what we did is have a look at all the different ways in which candidates a doctoral researchers put together their thesis that includes publications. So today's uh, data comes from this, uh, this paper that was published in 2018. And just a little bit of background, if I can change my slide. Uh, basically what we did is we gathered as many thesis theses by publications as we could. We found about 600 or so and what we did is analyze those from the social sciences uh, and a few from the humanities. We focused on this particular area because this is uh, the space where the TBP is growing. Uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, information advice for students in this in the social sciences. So this particular paper does focus on uh, the social sciences, but I think the structures can be applied to any field. So these come from Australian universities, but the researchers themselves come from across the world. And these are all uh, dissertations that include one or more publications within the body of the thesis. It doesn't include those that include their publication in the, uh, in the appendices. Now, in our study, we found that uh, the researchers included an average of 4.5 publications. So in all of our figures, uh, we've included four, four uh, publications for the most part as an example. But of course, this can be um, uh, adjusted to suit your particular thesis. So what we did is we looked at how the theses are put together and we found 11 different uh, ways that uh, students have, have done this. So I'm going to share, share those with you today. Okay, so our first uh, model we call sandwich model A. There are three different uh, sandwich models that are quite similar. And what we see is the introduction and a conclusion chapter that sandwiches in the three, uh, sorry, the four uh, papers, each which have their own chapter. So they're likely to be prefaced with a little bit of information about the chapter, what it's going to be involved and how it fits into the, uh, the whole uh, thesis. Similarly, uh, we can see uh, this model. It's also a sandwich model, but we have all the papers together within one chapter. And then again, we have uh, the papers in the center and they'll be organized in different ways. So we've used two papers within two chapters as our example, but there were different variations. So for example, chapter two might be focused on one particular research question and chapter three on another research question or different phases of your study or different methodological approaches. So these, the, and these, this sandwich model was by far the most common. Then we have what we call the mega sandwich model. And again, we have three models, A, B, and C, but basically we're seeing the same thing. So we have an introduction and a conclusion chapter, but we also have some extra filling in, in the sandwich. So there is a literature, literature review chapter and the methodology chapter. Uh, and what we'll probably find is that these are going to be shorter than what you would traditionally see in, in a thesis, uh, but it's going to fill in some of the gaps that perhaps the papers don't cover. So while you might uh, have a literature review in each of these, you're limited in what you can include in a journal article, which has quite strict uh, word limits. So this is going to be an opportunity for you to to fill in the gaps. Uh, also with the research methodology, you might have different 
methodologies, different methodological approaches that you're using in your different papers, but you would use the chapter, uh, your methodology chapter, to explain how the design of the study as a whole all fits together, something you wouldn't be able to do in the individual papers. So similarly, uh, we have the same with the papers all together and again divided in different ways depending on how your uh, study can be, uh, can be dissected, can be split up. And the final of our sandwich uh, model uh, structures, you can see here we have an introduction and a conclusion and we have our papers here. These papers are likely going to be reporting some findings. But what we also see, and these are in green because uh, you're not necessarily having a paper in each chapter, but these are potential areas, you could have uh, extra chapters. So for example, you may have published a, a systematic review of the literature, which probably wouldn't, uh, where is my cursor? probably wouldn't fit here, it would more likely or more uh, better fit in the literature review chapter. So along with perhaps some, uh, some extra um, explanations and uh, um, review of the literature, you'd also include your paper. Uh, that might also be the case for the methodology chapter. You might have uh, published a paper that reports on a new methodological approach and that probably wouldn't be uh, best suited to chapter four, but within the chapter uh, based on your methodology. Much less common um, to see it, uh, a paper in the conclusion, although we did, we did see that in, in um, one or two cases. Okay, so those are our sandwich models and these are the most common, but we also see some uh, different ways in which uh, a thesis was structured within our data set. Uh, one model that we saw was we, what we call a two-part model. So what we have is the thesis broken up into two very distinct uh, sections. The first section has the introduction, it reviews the literature, again probably not to the depth that you would usually see, an overview of the design, a summary of all the papers and their contribution to the uh, overall study and some conclusions and recommendations. Basically everything that a reader or an, a, an examiner is going to need to understand the papers and then the final thing is just to jump in finally to read the actual papers, having all that um, knowledge behind, uh, behind you. The next, um, this was just one case, this actually happens to be my thesis. Uh, Margaret and my uh, TBPs were included in the data set. And so one of the things that I struggled with was that I had papers that reported my findings, but I also had papers uh, that reviewed different uh, elements uh, of my study and uh, it was a little more than a literature review. Um, one was a meta-analysis uh, of the existing research, one was an analysis of media representations, and one was an analysis of policy documents. But each of these had it, its own methodology, and that is content analysis. So I kind of needed two separate methodology uh, sections because this was very different to the, uh, the empirical study um, that was informed by um, those content analyses. So it, it took a lot of time to work out this is, this is how I finally presented my own, my own thesis with a conceptual phase and an empirical phase, both which have an introduction, methodology and findings. And again, sandwiched in between the introduction and conclusion chapter. Uh, next we have another model, and or this should say n equals 1, there's a, a mistake in our paper, um, and we can see the author has divided the uh, thesis into uh, theory, method and application sections, 
and each of those sections is a mix of narrative uh, of what you might traditionally see in a chapter along with the papers. So the first section looking at the theory building, the methodology used, and then the application and um, the findings of the study. And finally, we have uh, this uh, structure, which is quite different to any of the others. Uh, it looks quite similar to a traditional thesis, but what we see is that each of these chapters is based, based quite heavily on the papers, although it doesn't include the papers as is. And the reason that the author uh, explained within their thesis was that because there were multiple papers uh, resulting uh, from this study, there would have been a lot of repetition. So this was an attempt to avoid that repetition. So just a few final takeaways. Uh, first is that the introduction and conclusion chapters are extremely common. Uh, I think from memory, 99% of the TBPs we looked at had an introduction a chapter and 97 had a conclusion chapter. So these are really important spaces, uh, although we do know that some universities do require, so that may be also a reason. Uh, we do find that many of the TBPs conform quite closely to a traditional um, model. Uh, they look very similar to a traditional thesis. We aren't sure whether that is because it's the best way uh, for uh, researchers to uh, showcase, I guess, their work. Um, or perhaps there is a concern that doing something too uh, different may, uh, may look, be looked unfavorably on by uh, either supervisors or examiners. But we would say that there is scope for experimentation with new models. There's often no rules about what uh, candidates can or can't do uh, and so there is some scope for for some experimentation and we'd love to see uh, if you have done something uh, novel and different uh, please please let us know so that we can get some more ideas because there's certainly space uh, for for growth um, and for variety because every uh, every thesis is going to be different. The types of publications that are included are going to be different. And so, yeah, we, we would really love to see expansion in this space. But for now, uh, hopefully seeing the different ways which uh, candidates have, uh, have organized their thesis might give you some ideas on how to do it yourself. So... I hope this was helpful and you can uh, check out the full paper uh, details in the description. Thank you. Bye-bye.